Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to offer our thanksgiving to God, let us confess our sins, that God will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, Colin. Peace be with you, Rita. Peace, Mike. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter saw the people, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why are you surprised at this? And why do you stare at us? Do you think it was by means of our own power or godliness that we made this man walk? 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has given divine glory to his servant Jesus. But you hand him, handed him over to the authorities, and you rejected him in Pilate's presence, even after Pilate had decided to set him free. He was holy and good, but you rejected him. And instead you asked Pilate to do you the favor of turning Hitler a murderer. You killed the one who leads to life, but God raised him from the death. And we are witnesses to this. It was the power of his name that gave him strength to this lame man. What you see and know was done by faith in his name. It was faith in Jesus that has made him well, as you can all see. And now my friends, I know what you and your leaders did to Jesus was due to your ignorance. God announced long ago through all the prophets that his Messiah had to suffer. And he made it come, this, come true in this way. Repent then and turn to God so that he will forgive your sins. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord does wonders for the faithful. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord does wonders for the faithful. Alleluia. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Alleluia. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Alleluia. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful and will hear me when I call. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord does wonders for the faithful. Alleluia. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Alleluia. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord does wonders for the faithful. Alleluia. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. Alleluia. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. Alleluia. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord does wonders for the faithful. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of John. See how much the Father has loved us. His love was so great that we are called God's children. And so, in fact, we are. This is why the world does not know us. It has not known God. My dear friends, we are now God's children, but it is not yet clear what we shall become. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Everyone who has this hope in Christ keeps himself pure, just as Christ is pure. Whoever sins is guilty of breaking God's law because sin is a breaking of the law. You know that Christ appeared in order to take away sins and that there is no sin in him. So everyone who lives in union with Christ does not continue to sin, but whoever continues to sin has never seen him or known him. 
Let no one deceive you, my children. Whoever does what is right is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a, go, for, a, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This week's Gospel offers a fresh perspective on the events of last week's gospel. And similar to what happens when two news reporters cover a single incident, John's and Luke's narratives differ slightly in the details they include. And we can learn by focusing on these differences as well as on the commonalities between the two stories. First, what is common to both? 
Well, for one thing, the action is taking place on the same day, the day of Jesus's resurrection. Although in today's gospel, it is the evening of that day. So by Jewish reckoning, which measures one day from sunset to sunset, today's gospel opens on the third day after Christ's crucifixion. Also, like last week, the disciples, described as the 11 and their companions, plus a certain Cleopas and friend, are gathered in a room when Jesus suddenly appears and greets them with the words, peace be with you. And like last week, by the end of this encounter, Jesus has commissioned his disciples to proclaim the repentance and forgiveness of sins, in this case, to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. The biggest commonality between the two accounts, however, is that the challenge of the disciples remains largely the same in both, namely to believe that their beloved teacher, who was crucified and laid in a tomb for two nights, has risen from the dead and come back to life among them. The disciples want to believe this, but like last week, it just seems too good to be true. So they're struggling, despite ample evidence that Jesus has risen. And Luke's account of the resurrection, which is not part of today's gospel, but is relevant, this evidence includes the testimony of more women than were named in John's account, among them Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, who with others witnessed the empty tomb. They also encounter two angels at the tomb who remind them that Jesus predicted his crucifixion and resurrection. Also common to the evidence in both stories is that Peter witnesses the empty tomb. And finally, of course, in both stories, the disciples encounter Jesus himself in the room with them. Only in today's gospel, even with all this evidence, all the disciples are described as disbelieving and still wondering. So much so that Jesus invites all of them, not just Thomas, to look at and touch his wounds. And still they don't believe. It's not until Jesus explains to them that he is the fulfillment of prophecies made in the books of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, that the minds of the disciples are finally opened and they believe. Instruction based on scripture, it seems, leads to revelation. So clearly one thing that Luke is emphasizing in today's gospel is a level of doubt and disbelief beyond what we saw last week. This week, all the disciples represent doubting Thomases, which I believe is Luke's way of reinforcing the message once again that our God who took on flesh and lived among us appreciates how difficult it is for human beings to believe in anything we can't see, hear, touch, taste, or smell. Today's gospel reminds us of God's grace when we falter in our faith due to the tragedies and challenges of everyday life. But there's more, and it relates to the differences between last week's and this week's gospel. Chief among them is a story describing an encounter on the road to Emmaus, not included in today's reading, but which occurs immediately before it and is critical to understanding today's gospel. Do you remember this story? Two dejected disciples, Cleopas and a friend, are walking to Emmaus, a nearby village located just outside of Jerusalem. As they walk, they are talking about the extraordinary events of the previous days. A stranger joins them on the road. We know it's Jesus. But like Mary Magdalene at the tomb last week, the two men fail to recognize him. He joins them and inquires about their conversation. With a mixture of sadness and astonishment, Cleopas recounts the details of Jesus's death and resurrection. The stranger responds by expounding on how the happenings fulfill the prophecies of Hebrew scriptures. When the disciples reach their destination, 
Jesus prepares to continue on, but the disciples prevail on him to spend the night with them. When they sit down to eat, the stranger takes the bread, blesses and breaks it, and gives it to them to eat. This sacramental act opens their eyes. They recognize Jesus just as he vanishes and are so provoked by the encounter that they return immediately to Jerusalem that night to share the story with the other disciples, which is when today's gospel opens. Interestingly, the structure of the Amaya story and today's gospel parallel each other. In both, the disciples are together discussing the amazing events of recent days. When the risen Christ appears, they fail to recognize him. Jesus scolds them for doubting. Food is presented. Jesus expounds on scripture. And finally, their eyes and their minds are opened. Similarly to the way that Luke amplifies the disciples' doubts in today's gospel, the events and parallel structure of these two stories takes last week's evocation of the Eucharist to a whole new level. Where the sacraments and the Eucharist are hinted at in last week's gospel, they are loudly proclaimed in this week's. And if we miss this at first, we have Christ's request for food to make it more obvious. Have you anything here to eat, Jesus asks, out of the blue? Like me, didn't this question startle you? It's a non sequitur if ever there was one. A mundane request tossed into the middle of miraculous happenings. This blend of the everyday with the extraordinary also evokes the Eucharist. On the one hand, the Eucharist is a simple sharing of bread and wine in community. On the other, it's a physical manifestation of God's eternal presence in our lives. A reminder of how human actions combined with divine presence can result in miracles. So when all this is taken together, what does it mean? First, that the Eucharist is not separate from our faith. It is an integral component of belief and the maintenance of faith. Likewise, whereas last week's gospel was primarily about faith, this week's gospel reminds us that faith is not just a spiritual esoteric state of being. It's not just an inner disposition nor a feeling someone has. Faith is a dynamic becoming. Think of it as a verb rather than a noun, a verb that involves believing, making a kind of decision that once made must be made again and again, over and over. We don't believe just once and then never doubt again. We are continually actively believing forever. Not only this, but the inclusion of meals of Jesus eating in today's story reminds us that faith also demands a physical component. That is to say, actions in the real world. For Christians, engagement with the world is not optional. It's part of our mission. Our faith demands that we take up our crosses inspired by Jesus and sustained by our sacraments, primary among them, the Eucharist. And finally, today's gospel reminds us of the importance of recognizing Jesus when we encounter him in the real world. A reminder that every encounter could be a meeting on the road to Emmaus. To end, let me share a personal story. The first time I led a worship service with Salal and Cedar, I was co-leading with a priest, not Laurel who was out of town, but another member of our community. I was leading the prayers and the priest was there to bless the Eucharist. As was our practice pre-COVID, we were meeting outdoors, in this case at Crab Park in the downtown east side. We had set up a small altar on a public bench alongside the sidewalk. And as you can imagine, the challenges of worshiping outdoors on a sunny Saturday afternoon in such a location include bicyclists, pedestrians, 
loud music from nearby picnickers, the marine horns of cruise ships, and broadcast communications from tugboats just offshore. Establishing and holding a sacred space in such circumstances can be challenging. But it was all going well, especially considering this was my first time. And then something remarkable happened. The moment arrived when the priest blessed the Eucharist. As we started passing the bread and wine from one person to another around our small circle, a passing pedestrian paused to observe from the sidewalk. He then approached and without saying a word, took a place standing beside me. I was startled. He was a stranger. I knew nothing about him. But when he reached out his cupped hands, a peace and a certainty fell over me. I placed the bread in his hand saying, the body of Christ, the bread of life. I shared the cup. When we finished our service, he stuck around briefly and chatted with us. Then he disappeared and I've never seen him again. I urge us all never underestimate the power of the Eucharist. The Eucharist brought me back to Christianity after a long estrangement. The Eucharist has the power to open hearts and minds. In sum, as Sarah Miles writes in her amazing book, Take This Bread, the Eucharist proclaims against reason that the hungry will be fed, that those cast down will be raised up, and that all things, including our own failures, are being made new. It offers food without exception to the worthy and unworthy, the screwed up and pious, and then commands everyone to do the same. It doesn't promise to solve or erase suffering, but to transform it, pledging that by loving one another, even through pain, we will find more life. And it insists that by opening ourselves to strangers, the despised or frightening or unintelligible other, we will see more and more of the holy. Since without exception, all people are one body, God's. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for John, our bishop, and for the clergy, people, and ministry of St. Aslam, Vancouver, St. Oswald, Port Kells, St. Helen, Surrey. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Northern Philippines, and especially the people and ministry of the Mission of St. Thomas 
the Apostle Valley. Let us pray for the Church of Ireland and its primates, the Most Reverend Francis McDougall, do well, and the Most Reverend Michael Jackson. Let us pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and all authority under her, especially public health officials. Let us pray for the sick and those in need, especially Jeff, Heidi, Diana, Susan, Erica, Ruth, Betty, Catherine, Marge, Green, Joanne, Nancy, Carmel, and Greg, and Margaret, and Margaret. <laughs> Contract, uh, it contracted COVID-19 for those lives and livelihoods have been disturbed by COVID-19. Let us pray for those who died, especially those who had COVID-19 and those who mourn. In the flesh and bones of the risen Christ, the invisible God stands among us. Let us pray to God for the needs of all believers and all people everywhere. O oh God, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us, give to all the nations an uh, awesome of the unity of human family. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness. Inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to create your greater praise for all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen who gave, give their energy, skill for healing those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who sent Christ to suffer and raise from the dead. Hear our prayer, which we offer through presence and proclaim forgiveness to sins of all nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, open to us the scriptures and make our hearts burn within us while you speak.
birth by the Spirit, and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate the resurrection, renew your gift of life within us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. 
Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Author of life divine, in the breaking of bread, we know the risen Lord. Feed us always in these mysteries that we may show your glory to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. We continue to get uh, cards and messages, and as you know, we have a faithful uh, group of people who every week send out cards to all those people who are named in our weekly prayer list. And uh, we recently prayed for our lay Eucharistic ministers. And um, how do we send out a card to, to those people? So we got a lovely message from, uh, from our card writing folks. We are not sure who this card should go to, but we want to acknowledge and give thanks to all those who are lay administrators of the sacrament of Holy Communion from the St. Thomas Parish family. Generous and loving God, please help us to acknowledge the countless and wonderful ways you work. Uh, thank you for that, uh, that acknowledgement to our, our lay Eucharistic ministers. We don't have much for you to do these days, but we are very grateful for the ministry that you give in this parish, and we look forward very much to the time when you will be able to exercise it again in our midst. And so please receive our thanks. Also, a reminder that uh, our Bible study in 1 Thessalonians continues this week, Tuesday evening at 7.30. We will be looking at chapter 2. Do we have other announcements? Yes. I, I have a brief announcement. Just a reminder to those people who can make it on Wednesday at 7.30 for hopefully the final discussion on land acknowledgements uh, on, on Zoom. The link will go out. Thank you. Uh, just so that you're aware, um, uh, Bryn, a number of folks are committed to an archdeaconry meeting that's at that same time and uh, will not obviously be able to attend both. So just, just so you know that if, if you are a lay delegate to Synod or an alternate delegate to Synod, uh, that group is meeting on Wednesday at 7. We could reschedule if, uh, if people want to. I'm open to that. That's that may be the way to do it, and that's a great conversation to have offline for sure. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Amen.